to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Uh, do I have any public comment from the board? Okay, I have one announcement. Um, the Salvation Army has challenged the mayors of Fitchburg, the mayor of uh, um, Weminster, and the Board of Selectmen to a red kettle challenge. And I've accepted that challenge on our behalf and will be ringing the bell at the Whitney Field Mall tomorrow at 3.30. And hopefully we'll raise more than the, the mayors do. <laughs> and uh, would appreciate it if anybody would like to come down and represent Lunenburg. Is there any public comment from the board, uh, from the public? Okay, let's get into it. Uh, first uh, item tonight is uh, interview, interviews, appointments, reappointments. We have a reappointment recommendation for the Architectural Protection District Historic Commission representative. And in your package, you'll notice there's a letter requesting reappointment by Colin Dwyer, Colin Dwyer and a letter from the Historic Commission supporting that reappointment. I would make a motion to uh, reappoint Colin Dwyer to the Historical Commission, to, excuse me, to the Architectural Preservation District Committee. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So we have to sign in. No. Okay. Super. Next, we have our town manager report. Okay. In your Google Drive, you have the report. Second. So the first item to report on is town facilities, about public forums. The first public forum, uh, what we also call the charrette, of a series of these types of meetings on town facilities was held on Thursday, December 7th at 7 p.m. And the meeting is available to be viewed on YouTube as well. We had approximately 20 participants that shared their ideas on the future of town buildings, what they envisioned for those spaces, and ideas on green space. One recommendation that came out, out of that meeting is to hold the same type of meeting with the seniors at the Senior Center. The date for this meeting will be February 5th at 10 a.m. And this will be advertised in the ledger on the website and in their newsletter that circulated to the seniors. An update on the property condition assessments. The property condition assessments for the Town Hall, Britter, Old Primary, the Brooks House, and the TC Passios concluded today. We hope to have the final report from the consultant within a couple of weeks that will be then incorporated into the capital plan. A complete streets public forum. The date for the public forum to hear feedback on areas in town that would increase safety and accessibility for all modes of travel for people of all ages and abilities will be Tuesday, January 9th, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the middle school, high school collaborative room. And that room number is A130. I also want to suggest a snow date in case we had to cancel that meeting. And a date in January, maybe another one of the select board's meeting dates. Do you want to just make it the 16th, or do you want to? Might as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now we will probably schedule some things on the 16th. So if we had to push it, we'd have to do a little bit of business and then have the uh, the uh, form. Right. That's fine. Okay. So that notice will be circulated around as well. Cleaning services for the town buildings. The invitation for bids to provide cleaning services to our town buildings is currently being advertised and bids are due January 3rd. As described leading up to the special town meeting, the current contract expired and based on preliminary estimates from cleaning companies, it will cost 15,000 more than originally budgeted for the remainder of the year under a new contract. 
A special town meeting approves appropriating the additional funding for this known expense. The contract will cover cleaning for the town hall, Ritter, the library, the teen center, senior center, the DPW, and the public safety building. The financial forecast presentation to the finance committee. The finance director and I met with Division of Local Services in November to review the town of Sutton's financial forecast that Division of Local Services did through the community compact program for the town of Sutton. There is additional data in the format they provided and currently the finance director is recreating all the spreadsheets with historical figures that tie back to the tax recap forms from each fiscal year. The finance director and I met with finance last Thursday and determined that I will present the five-year financial forecast to the finance committee on Thursday, January 25th. A green communities update. On December 7th, the DPW director, school facilities director, the green communities task force chairman and I met with Tanko Lighting about the process to convert our existing street lights to LED lights. Chairman Blatt will be reporting to the Green Communities Task Force tomorrow evening on this topic. The meeting with Tanko was strictly to hear about the process and the potential costs. This would still require more research, a formal request to Unitel for the depreciated cost to purchase the existing street lights, and would ultimately need to have buy-in as well as then formally be put out to bid. If the town was successful in being awarded the next round of comp competitive green communities funding, this would be an eligible project. Through the DOER grant, the town received for grant administration services, Karen Chapman of Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission has lined up a free energy audit by Energy Source that will be conducted on Wednesday, December 27th. This will include the town hall, the Ritter and the public safety buildings. Just one question, when you said this would have to have ultimately need buy-in, mm -hmm. that means buy-in from Unitel? Or what, what does that mean, would no. ultimately need buy-in? I does would that assume buy-in from the board. No. Okay, so we just have to approve it. Right. Okay. The combines training. Staff from the Commonwealth's Operational Services Division came to Town Hall on December 12th to provide our staff that will frequently be required to either post bids or purchase items off a state contract, a demonstration of the new software called Combuys. Due to changes in procurement law under the Municipal Modernization Act, bids over a certain dollar threshold are now required to be posted on Combuys. And just a announcement, town offices will be closed Monday, December 25th, and Tuesday, December 26th, in observation of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I had a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, on the, um, the Senior Center um, forum that you're going to hold in February, mm -hmm. I was wondering if that, as well as the Complete Streets Workshop, um, could be on the website now. When I looked at the website today, there were, there's six events listed and three are from 2016 and three are from October and November. I mean, they're really, if I was gonna look for information and I saw that, I'd try to find my information someplace else. You know, I mean, the January 9th meeting is very soon. It's like the next meeting. Mm -hmm. That should be on the website now. Mm -hmm. And I think there's no harm in putting the, the February meeting. I mean, it's better than something from 2016. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep, and and also, I would think that for the Senior Center, um, they often put signs around the Senior Center so the seniors are aware of things. Maybe Sue Doherty and someone over there can put up a couple posters in the Senior Center. Because I, I really think seniors would like to be a part of this. You know, I when I help out at the pancake breakfast, I do hear some people mentioning <laughs> They'd like to have more of a voice and they don't use computers and, you know, so I, I really think this would be something that would interest a lot of them. So I'd like to make sure they know about it. Mm -hmm. We can do that tomorrow. And, you know, I had another question about um, the, um, the energy audit. Well, one, one in the cleaning services, I noticed that the teen center is included. Are we reimbursed for that or does the town pay to clean the teen center? That's part of the budget. 
the town pays for mm -hmm. that. Um, how much of the teen center expenses does the town take? Because that's the Boys and Girls Club, right? I mean, do we pay yeah. for heating? I believe so. That's all lumped into town facilities. And, and electric? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't they be part of that energy audit? The, the buildings that were chosen were chosen by the Green Communities Task Force for the energy audit. But I, think it was, I, think it was based, I think it was based on the age of the, mm -hmm. age of the building. Since those were newer, they would have had to have had more energy efficiency to begin with, so they focused on the older ones first. But couldn't those other ones be included? I mean, the senior center is pretty old. They were including ones that they were hopefully going to apply for eligible projects for the competitive green communities funding. I know that the senior center, they already replaced all the lighting. So the Green Communities has already been doing things at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. on a, they've already been doing a lot of work on that one. So I don't know, the Teen Center, I'm assuming, it's because it's much newer. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okay. I noticed that Mr. Dwyer came in. I'm sorry we handled that business <laughs> quite rapidly, but congratulations, you've been <laughs> reappointed. Did you have anything you wanted to say or anything? Or? Uh, no, I just, I, I look, look forward to Helen Dwyer, 76 Main Street. I look forward to serving on the APDC again. Great, thank you very much. Thanks for volunteering. All right, next old business is the continuation of the 2018 license renewal. Us. And I think in your package we have three. Yes, three you remaining wanna, licenses. You want to go through that for us? Yeah. Sure. So a common victualler license for PK and P Corporation doing business as dip and donuts. A limousine license for first choice limousine and transportation. Transportation Service, Inc., doing business as First Choice Limousine, and a golf driving range license for Mark S. Testa, doing business as Lakeview Driving Range. I'd make a motion that we approve the three licenses as read by the town manager. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Now, there was... An item in there, and I think it's just FYI at this point, but about Sunday entertainment licenses and a recommendation for fees. Uh, I don't know if you want to discuss that in any way, but if, if we decide to implement that, we should put that on the agenda and actually have a, a discussion about it. But I didn't want to lose the fact that it was in tonight's package. Yeah, I think it makes sense to put it on a future agenda. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Which brings us to current business and our first item of current business is to review and consider a response to the open meeting law complaint filed by Catherine Adams on December 6th uh, 2017 regarding selectman's meeting on November 9th 2017 uh, the town received an open meeting law complaint on December 6th the board is required to meet within 14 business days from the date of that receipt to review the complainant's allegations, take remedial action if appropriate, notify the complainant of the remedial action, and forward a copy of the complaint and description of the remedial action taken to the complainant. The public body must simultaneously notify the attorney general that it has responded to the complainant and provide the Attorney General with a copy of the response and a description of any remedial action taken. So our action item for this evening is to read the summary of uh, the Town Council's response to that complaint, uh, discuss if we want to make any changes to that, and then vote whether we choose to uh, forward that to the complainant. So I will read our proposed response as prepared by our town council. To Catherine Adams, 45 Williams Drive, Lunenburg, Mass, 01462, RE Open Meeting Law Complaint, Municipality, Town of Lunenburg, Board of Selectmen, Complainant, Catherine Adams, alleged violation date, November 9, 2017, 
complaint filing date December 6, 2017. Dear Ms. Adams, reference is made to the above captioned matter. Our firm represents the town of Lunenburg. In that connection, as town council, we have been tasked with reviewing the complaint received by the town on December 6, 2017, alleging that the Board of Selectmen, specifically Jamie Toll, Robert Ebersol, Phyllis Luck, and Paula Bertram, together the board violated the open meeting law on November 9, 2017. In reviewing this matter, we have received information from the town manager, Heather Lemieux, and the board's chairman, Jamie Toll. We have also reviewed the minutes and portions of the video from the board's November 9, 2017 me meeting, as well as portions of the video from the board's November 14, 2017 meeting. Based upon that information, we believe that no open meeting law violation occurred, but also that any violation, if found, was sufficiently cured through appropriate remedial measures. More specifically, we respond to your complaint as follows. Your complaint asserts that the aforementioned board members deliberated in whispered terms, tones during an open meeting. The open meeting law requires that all deliberations take place during a meeting. General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, a deliberation is defined as an oral or written communication through any medium, including the electronic mail, between or among a quorum of public body on any public business within its jurisdiction. Whispered deliberations among a quorum in tones which are inaudible to those present at a meeting violate the open meeting law. COML 2013-40 and 2015-139. The open meeting law requires that meetings of a public body be open and accessible to the public. See General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20A, Open Meeting Law 2012-49. Access must include the opportunity to be physically present as well as to see and hear what is being discussed by the members of the public body. See Open Meeting Law 2017-16, Open Meeting Law 2013-189, Open Meeting Law 2012-66, and Open Meeting Law 2012-48. Here, the board is composed of five members, three constituting a quorum. During the November 9, 2017 meeting, which is a meeting of the Finance Committee, attended by certain selectmen and therefore posted by them as a selectmen's meeting as well, three of the four board members present sat together at a table to listen to the presentation. Member Paula Bertram was also present but did not sit with the others until the end of the meeting, that is, when she joined them at the table. The board then voted its recommendations on the warrant articles that had been considered by the Finance Committee, whether affirmatively or negatively. Though these votes were not taken at the microphone, the table at which the board members sat was both in the same meeting room with the Finance Committee and fully accessible to the public. Any use of the lowered voices was only to avoid unnecessary disruption to the Finance Committee. No vote was taken in secret, nor was there any intent by the board to take these votes secretively, as evidenced by the fact that, one, the board members raised their substantive concerns earlier in the meeting and at the microphone, as more fully detailed below. Two minutes were created, memorializing each vote by the selectmen present, see Exhibit 1, and three, the votes were reiterated by the board's November 14, 2017 meeting, see footnote 2 at 3617, and again at the special town meeting on November 28, 2017, at which you were present. The Warren articles referenced above were well known to the board before the Finance Committee's November 9, 2017 meeting. As the board has previously had substan substantive discussions on the warrant at its meetings, the board attended the Finance Committee's meeting and delayed its recommendations on these articles until the end of said meeting so as to be sure that it had all the relevant information necessary to vote responsibly. Mr. Toll has indicated that no substantive discussion or debate occurred among board members at the time of their votes at the conclusion of the November 9, 2017 meeting. Instead, the board simply voted on each article. In fact, in one instance, the board did not reach a unanimous vote 
on an article, and so the board opted to postpone its recommendation until town meeting, where further information could be considered. All substantive discussion, excluding the actual votes, took place at the microphone with the following board members speaking. Mrs. Bertram at 1224, Mr. Ebersol at 2507, Mr. Toll at 2947, Mrs. Bertram at 3511, and Mr. Ebersol at 1 hour 4636. On the petitioned article mentioned in your complaint, i.e. Article 11, Mr. Ebersol spoke at the microphone for several minutes beginning at 1 hour 28 minutes 33 seconds. Based on the foregoing, we again conclude that no open meeting law violation occurred at the board's November 9th, 2017 meeting, and further, that any violation found to have occurred was cured with sufficient remedial measures. Thank you for your consideration of the above. We appreciate your efforts to ensure compliance with the open meeting law, and the town assures you of its ongoing commitment to accomplish this shared goal. Sincerely, Catherine McNamara Federoff and Adam J. Costa Town Council with copies to the Board of Selectmen, the Division of Open Government, and Heather Lemieux. <laughs> At this point, we can discuss any recommended changes to the response that Council has drafted. I have no proposed changes. I think it covers the uh, what our intent was and then specifically what we did during the uh, uh, following meeting where we announced the, the results and the fact that we did not actually have any discussions other than votes on each of the articles. I think this describes what, what, what went on. As do I. As do I. Okay. Uh, I will need a vote to authorize town council to send the agreed upon response to the complainant on our behalf and a copy to the Attorney General's office. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Uh, next item, we have minutes from November 7th. We have a warrant in the amount of $491,543.31 in the action file. I have one um, at the December 12th workshop. There was some discussion about the desire of town boards to meet together on a regular basis to discuss issues of common interest. I would ask the board to charge the town manager to make this happen as soon as possible through the land use director. What are you asking for specifically? Um, at the December 12th meeting, some members of town board said that they have been asking to get together as town boards. And um, a couple of, it kind of was in the discussion about expedited permitting mm -hmm. and matters of common interest. So are you looking for specific departments or just a general all departments or land use departments? I think land use departments. Land I use think, departments. you know, conservation, planning, board of health. So uh, just for my clarification, get together with each other or get together yes, with us? With each other. Okay. And then should that include us or no? Um, or I don't Adam, know that. Is Adam our representative? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Fine. I just want to be clear on the question. Okay. I don't think they, they it, it, when they were discussing it, I don't think they were asking for us to be there. Okay, fine. I, I think it makes sense. I think we should do that periodically. I, I know that, you know, at one point there was a chairs meeting held, you know, every quarter, um, and, and that seemed to facilitate a lot of discussion and a lot of cooperation amongst the board, so I think it's a good, it's a good idea, and it should be so. something that's ongoing. I agree. Great. Any other action file issues? Committee reports. Ms. McQuaid. Um, for capital planning, we've received uh, presentations from the police chief, the fire chief, and the uh, schools, and waiting for presentation from the DPW at our first meeting in January. And uh, we're scheduled to do our prioritization exercise on January 9th. So we're moving along in our process there 
Oh, what time is what time do you meet then? At five or something? Five, yes. Five. Tuesdays, five. And I'll try to I'll try to reach out to PAC and get the prioritization meeting uh, televised anyway. Oh, see if they be can great see idea. if they can cover that. Is that it? Ms. Luck? Um, at their last meeting, the school committee heard non-personnel budget requests from the schools, special services, and athletic program. The primary school's request was for a 17% increase. The elementary school was for a 62% increase. The middle school asked for a 30% increase, and the high school asked for a 37% increase. Um, they will meet again tomorrow evening. Can you give a highlight on the elementary? Why 62%? Do you, do you know what the uh, 62 yeah I I brought the paper with me let's see that's okay I can I can look it up I just thought you might know off the top of your head what the what the yeah, what the driving I share okay, this with thanks you. you're welcome um, let's see where was I okay they'll meet again tomorrow evening the ZBA is meeting on the 27th to hear three requests for residential special permits the MART Advisory Board met this morning. I was unable to attend, but I believe the town manager did. And I'm assuming it was more about the... The agreement. The agreement. Mm -hmm. I, I did go to that meeting, and no action was taken at this point on the agreement. There's more information needed by all the towns for direct and indirect costs for transportation. Okay. Thank you. And that's it for me. Um, the Cable Advisory Committee met last night. Um, we did have a finally receive a counter offer from Comcast, which for the most part we were amenable to. We do have some counter um, points that we've made, and Bill Ewer, our attorney, will present those and get back to us um, with Comcast response. But we are hoping that we can finally come to an agreement and bring something to you um, for the Jan first meeting in January. Um, Fingers crossed. Um, the MPO is meeting tomorrow, and we will start the TIP for the next three years. And again, I would urge, you know, there's a lot of interest in the town on complete streets. There's been a lot of concerns about walkability, about parking. All of those are items that could be brought up and, and brought into the Unified Planning Work Program um, for studies by MP, by MART. Um, and if there's a desire to do that, I'm happy to advocate for that, but I don't have any real direction um, from the town as to whether or not there's an interest in pursuing those. So when I'm happy it, to... When's it due? It, we're going to start the TIP process tomorrow, um, you know, but I really need to have... It, I've seen and, and been very um, impressed with some of the work they've done for some of the communities just doing a walkability study, doing a parking study, do, and I think those are things we would be very interested in. But if, you know, if, if Heather, if you can touch base with me and, and give me some direction or, um, but that meeting's mm -hmm. tomorrow, it certainly don't have to have that information by tomorrow, but I would like to at least plant the seed that this is something we're working on. Um, do you, do, you, do you think they'd need specific streets in the app in the application or do you think the topics the the topics is I mean, certainly i mean certainly heather can has got a lot of the feedback from the charrette and other things like that but mm -hmm. not only in the center of town but the whole concept of uh sidewalks throughout the town certainly not the entire town but um you know we're we just appropriated money for the playground in uh wallace park mm -hmm. looking at some of the needs for um sidewalks there the whole concept of complete streets planning and other things like mm -hmm. that i know we have a grant for it but mm -hmm. it's like okay can we hurry up and get something and knowing that it's not going to get approved until maybe year two but right right i can see about getting the minutes from the first meeting we had on complete streets with with just mm -hmm. the town officials mm -hmm. and that will have a lot of the locations for mm -hmm. sidewalks and accessibility okay great and you, you know the schools are eligible for grants for sidewalks right I think right. through complete streets. I think. Right, but we have to be a. Com we did adopt complete streets, so now yes, you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, you know, there's a huge concern about parking, which is very valid, and I think we potentially should look at a parking study. Um, so I've seen other communities take advantage of funding, you know, through the the um, state funding process, and I and I. I'm absolutely happy to advocate for, advocate for Lunenburg, but I just need to have the approval of the board to do that and information to do that. Good. So the um, 
library board of trustees reviewed their section of the town charter at that last meeting and came up with some proposed changes um sewer commission is going to be looking at it and uh, board of health uh, was uh, had that on their agenda as well uh, the charter commission uh, continues to meet twice a month um, we're a little concerned whether we will meet our target of annual town meeting for a proposed change um, we're still going to try to move as fast as we possibly can but we um, uh, we are getting good feedback from um, various entities that we want to make sure we get it done right. right. Uh, the process uh, several boards have asked is that uh, we go through the process, we get the feedback from everybody, um, we will come up with a proposed recommendation. We will hold lots of public hearings and forums that will be publicized. Um, but ultimately, it's the Charter Commission's vote, uh, and there's that it can't be amended. So um, what we have done is we have uh, set a, uh, a rule for ourselves that changes have to be done with a two-thirds vote of the entire Charter Commission, uh, not just those who are at the meeting, uh, two-thirds vote, to make sure that what we make for changes will be uh, substantially supported by the um, Charter Committee, uh, which would hopefully increase the chance of passing a town meeting. Um, when you said can't be amended, you mean can't be amended at town meeting? That's right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, well, that's sense. right. Once it's adopted, it could be am amended by the town again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And you can amend it before you bring it to town meeting, but it's just the the chart. The charter commission would have to amend it. So, whatever we come up with, uh, if we say we're not going to change it, then that's it, regardless of what the public says. Mm -hmm. Although yeah, we'll right, be responsive. Right. Um, so one of the things we haven't said yet, we'll be meeting with the town manager specifically in January, uh, but we haven't actually officially asked the Board of Selectmen for their opinion. Um, so certainly part of the process might be you may want to wait till we get a product. But if you have anything as an individual person that you would like to make sure that we address one particular department or one particular language that you think should be added or changed, feel free to send uh, me an email and we'll send it to all the, the charter. Okay. Uh, we are able to, uh, the PAC has been uh, able to uh, video uh, our all our meetings. Uh, That's great. We're not live, but it's, uh, it's broadcast afterwards and then on YouTube. That's it for me. Yeah. FinCom met, met last Thursday. I was not there, but their their major agenda item was to, to input to the Charter Review Committee uh, on those items that impact the uh, Finance Committee. And uh, the chair of the FinCom is a member of the Charter Review Committee, so she is uh, responsible for bringing that information back to that group. Council on Aging met um, last week, and they are they have a plan to come and give us a, a brief presentation in January on their goals, objectives, uh, mission, and uh, any thoughts on what we can do to help them be successful. Uh, the only other thing I have is not a department review, but input on the town manager's performance is due in two days. Oh. <laughs> No, I wanted to answer um, Paula's question. When I looked at the Turkey Hill Elementary, a couple things that stuck out was professional development last year was $5,000, and they're looking for 15000 this year. And last year, they didn't have any new furniture requests, and this year they want um, $17,000 worth of new furniture. So those are a couple of things, okay. because it went from like 49000 to 79000 so those are big pieces. And that's okay. why percentages can be scary. Uh -huh. But if it's on a small number, right. it's still a large right. percentage, but right. it's not as right. much dollars right. than if you... Exactly. That's why I really... 62% jumped out at me. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's non-person. It's non-personnel. Okay. 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 Anything else? Okay. Our, our upcoming schedule, we don't meet again until January 2nd. Uh, as we mentioned, the January 9th meeting is devoted to a complete streets public forum with the rain date being the 16th. Snow date. Oh, uh, the snow date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to meet rain or, rain or shine as long as it's not snowing. Uh, so that, that is our schedule. And, and I think if, if the town manager is going to present to the five-year forecast to the FinCom on the 25th, we ought to consider whether we, we mm. want to post that. Yes, we I should we'll see how many it. of we us are going to it. it. Yeah. All right. I had a question. Is January second? Is the are the town offices open on January second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking that the twenty fifth and twenty sixth were Christmas holidays, so I was thinking the first and second might be okay. 
All righty. Is there any public comment from the public? Please. Uh, good evening, it's Katie Adams from Williams Drive, and I listened closely to the response um, to the open meeting law violation, um, but it didn't really address the actual perp uh, you know, question behind the violation I submitted. So um, the nature of what I was concerned about was that there was no posted agenda for the items that took place that night. The agenda had said that the Board of Selectmen would view the Finance Committee meeting, and the part of the open meeting law that I was reading is where it requires for an agenda to be present 48 hours prior to the meeting where all reasonable topics to be discussed would be lists so that if somebody had intended to participate, they would have had the knowledge that that was occurring that evening. And that was what was in the write-up that I did was that discussion and possible recommendations on the special town meeting articles uh, was not an agenda item on the Selectman's agenda for November 9th, 2017. It was, however, on their agenda for the 14th. I did run this by the Attorney General's office, and they said that it would have needed to have a posted agenda to have taken place the way that it did, and that they didn't think that having a separate, simultaneous meeting was something that was accessible to the public if people at the Finance Committee meeting were in tune to what was happening up here. They were taking place simultaneously. Um, all of the time-stamped items that were mentioned prior to 8.55, your meeting was not in session until 8.55, and so those, I would assume, all were selectmen um, participating individually in the Finance Committee meeting. Um, there were discussions and recommendations made in those minutes. If that was to occur, according to open meeting law, it would have had to have been an agenda item. So the whole nature of my complaint or was really the disappointment of not being able to witness and be a part of the discussion of your votes on the Warren articles. And the whole nature of my complaint was that there needed to have been an agenda posted to have conducted such business 48 hours prior to have doing so. I didn't feel that any of that was addressed in that letter. And so I would either look for a response to my actual question or just submit my complaint to the Attorney General's office because you would have needed an agenda item to have done what occurred that evening and doing it simultaneously was not considered accessible. Also in that letter it mentioned that it was viewed on YouTube and to my knowledge that portion of the meeting wasn't on YouTube. So I didn't really understand the response because it really didn't go to the nature of my question. Thank you. Any other public comment? Any Public comment from the board. I just, I'm happy to hear that we're doing the forum with the seniors um, and look forward to that. My only other question is on the economic development. Do we have anything else on the horizon for a schedule um, as far as what our next goals are, whether it's another charrette, whether it's a targeted charrette on specific buildings, or whether it's a charrette with, I had mentioned the idea of farmers and artists, and I don't know. And I guess I'd like to some feedback from the board on what you guys are thinking as far as what the next steps are beyond the meeting with the seniors. My, my feedback is that this this is with the town manager and the uh, land use director to uh, come up with a schedule based on the feedback that came out that night. I, okay. I, I don't see that it's our schedule, it's, it's that their schedule. I mean, it's our goal but I think that process for outreach uh, is for them to come up with a schedule and let us know what that schedule is. Okay, okay, so is that something maybe you and Adam can work on? Okay. And as I just, I, I wanna have as much publicized in advance so that people can put it on their calendar and know when the dates are and be there and hopefully we can get more people to participate if we can advertise well in advance. So, thank you. Is that quick? Sure. If I can. Sure. Um, I've uh, neglected to mention that. Um, so Elaine went to and uh, Samantha Tucker from the administrative assistant for the DPW went to Mass Toss uh, program where the town was awarded two awards, recognition awards for recycling. One was for our outstanding waste reduction programs. 
So with each participating household averaging less than a thousand pounds of trash a year. That was one. The other was that uh, we have over 80% participation in our community program for recycling. So it's both noteworthy. Great. That is a great program. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And they, sh they should have sent those notice to us electronically and by instead of by paper. <laughs> 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 but we can recycle that after we <laughs> share it with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.